Hi there, my name is Dina Falcone, herbalist, educator, author of Foraging and Feasting and Earthly Bodies in Heavenly Hair. And who is the subject of today's lesson? It is golden rod, golden rod surrounding me, solidagos. That's the genus. This is in the Asteraceae family, so it's the solidago species that we're focusing on. And right here I'm surrounded by, I think, four or five different species of solidago. But why do we want to celebrate these golden rods? What's so amazing about them? Um, they are medicine for the upper respiratory system and for the urinary tract. So they support us in moving our bodies through infections and inflammations uh, in the upper respiratory and in the urinary tract, in the kidney area. Yes, solidagos have more gifts than that, but today's lesson is focused on that. And um, let's just talk about the qualities of solidago, of goldenrod. We have a, an astringent, antiseptic, diuretic, decongestant that's anti-inflammatory. So all of those qualities, um, and it has an affinity, like I said, for the upper respiratory, specifically the sinuses, and also for the kidney, bladder, and urinary tract. So let's also discuss something about this. Solidagos, many of the genus, I mean many of the species within the genus Solidago are used medicinally so you don't have to um, key out your species specifically although it's a good idea to do so but so many of the species are used interchangeably that today we're actually going to focus on the most prolific one in my region that's peaking right now is Solidago rugosa. But again, the point is that you're going to find the solidagos that grow in your area and you're going to learn to ID them and then harvest and use them. Let's talk about how, yeah, peak medicine moment for this plant, which is happening right now. So that's going to involve a little bit of a close-up shot because the goal here is for you to gather this particular plant as it just starts to bloom. So it just starts to make flower and then you would put that into a tincture and um, if you wanted to dry it you would gather it a little bit pre-flower so that it's in bud stage and when it actually dries it just slightly opens and blooms rather than turning into seed. So I'm going to show you that up close. What does it look like? at peak for tincture making and at peak for tea making. Um, I also want to mention that when you use this medicine of goldenrod for the sinuses, you are looking for a tincture preferred. You can still use a tea, but the tincture ge generally goes up in the body. And if you are looking to work with the kidneys and the bladder, again, you could use a tincture, but a tea is more specific for that situation. So that's the different uses. Um, and how to prepare goldenrod for specific use. Other things to consider if you want to make a fresh tincture of goldenrod, you're going to use 140 proof, that's 70% uh, pure grain organic alcohol. No, it's just 70% organic grain alcohol. Um, and what else? Okay, let's discuss where are you going to find this plant. Where does it like to grow? In terms of habitat, we are in a open meadow, in a field. It likes sun to part sun um, in most soil types. The particular species that we're surrounded by, the more dominant one, the Solidago rugosa, is actually hardy in zones 4 to 8 of the USDA. And where does it typically grow within the United States? This species is native to eastern to central regions of North America. It is now in Southeast China and in parts of Europe. But again, just to remind you, you're looking for your regional local solidago and you're gonna tap into its medicine. So this is an aromatically rich medicinal and let's get into keying it out. Here we are with solidago rugosa and you can see that its blooms are plume-like and they are at the top of the plant and they are small tiny little composite flowers they're little yellow flowers and this is peak bloom moment 
Here we go scanning Solidago rugosa and it has a rough round stem, central stem, and we keep moving up and then you begin to see the leaf arrangement which is alternate. So this Solidago rugosa has an alternate leaf arrangement which you can see and now we go moving all the way up and the leaves become really tiny up here toward the inflorescence, toward the flower. Let's give you a close-up of these leaves. Here we have a leaf that's pulled from the lower part of the plant and you can see that it has pretty <laughs> large teeth there, these forward pointing teeth. And here we have a leaf from the top of the plant where the flower is happening and you can see that its serrations pretty much disappear. The leaf shape is lanceolate to ovate, um, perhaps a little elliptic and both have pointy pointy tips so you're going to see that. Also we lose any petiole, it's a very, becomes quite long, we, set, we lose this leaf stalk here so this becomes sessile and here you see a pretty tiny one so but it still has a little bit of a leaf stem right there a little leaf stalk so again to just say I don't know if I mentioned this is rough and wrinkly so the texture of this is rough and wrinkly um, and let's just flip it over so you can see the veining pattern which is feathered feathered and again for dimensions we're looking at leaves that tend to be up to four inches long perhaps as little as a half an inch long. It can be smaller than this and the width is um, usually no more than a, maybe an inch or a half an inch. Yeah, it's a little more than a half. This is about an inch anyway to give you a sense of leaf dimension. Okay, let's go on to show you blossoms. And here's goldenrod with blooms just emerging at the tip here but haven't fully opened here. This is an ideal state for making medicine. And let me show you um, one past bloom. Here we have budding solidago, and then we have full bloom solidago, and then we have blooms are already spent solidago. So you can see this one before bloom is actually what you'd want to harvest when you're making, uh, dry, when you're drying to store for tea. This is what you'd like to harvest when you're making tincture. And this you don't really want to harvest unless you're desperate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here is where you harvest from. This is the flowering top and um, this includes a good amount of leaf as well as those flowers. Let me just show you what you do with this now. So our specimen here has just a touch of slightly spent blooms but it's gonna it's still amazing medicine and what you do to make the medicine is you actually take off all of the leaves and flowers and you basically you're stripping you're removing that main stem so that main stem we say goodbye to because it's mostly cellulose it doesn't have a lot of Medi it doesn't have medicine in it and then we use these leaves and we use these tops and actually I would continue to strip all of this off of these stems as well. So it's called stripping. So you're using leaf and flower to make your medicine and this would be for tincture. If I was making tea I would actually harvest this slightly um, pre-bloom and then I would dry it. Okie dokie. Uh, what else to say? Yes, I want to mention that when you ID goldenrod, we want to always discuss, right, odor and flavor, aroma. So what's going on with the scent of this? And this is a richly aromatic. So you want to get that. Most of the goldenrods share some of these aromatics. And this is carroty. <laughs> Le lemon slightly, citrusy perhaps, apple-y, um, yeah there's a lot of aroma coming out and then let's also if you safely ID'd you want to be able to nibble it 
and get a sense of flavor. Mm. And you do get also the, the bitterness in this that comes out in your, uh, in your taste, the bitter and also the astringency. So let's review the gifts of Solidago, the gifts of Goldenrod. We have an ally right, that is, has an affinity for clearing infections and clearing excess mucus from the upper respiratory, so sinus catarrh, sinus infections, and then we also have an ally that works with the, the kidney bladder, the urinary tract in uh, dealing with UTIs, with kidney stones, with opening the kidneys up and releasing. So may goldenrod be uh, a beautiful ally in your life. May you be enriched by goldenrod. And if you've enjoyed this and you want more, check out my online course, Wild Food Health Boosters and Herbal Remedies at wildfoodhealthboosters.com. See you next time.